Hi, I'm Bob. Welcome to the Stata course on regression analysis and estimation methods. Today, we will talk about a popular identification strategy in policy effects evaluation. It is the difference in differences method. We use this technique to investigate whether a policy or treatment has a significant effect on the outcome variable. Let's take a look at the elements of difference in differences. In a standard difference in differences setup, we have two groups of people, the treatment group and the control group. The treatment group receives some kind of treatment, such as a government policy, a change in medication, or any other intervention of interest. The control group, on the other hand, is not exposed to the treatment. In addition to two groups of people, we have two time periods. The treatment occurs in between the two time periods. In other words, we have observations before the treatment and after the treatment. To figure out the treatment effect, we compare the outcomes such as health, wage or employment rate between the treatment group and the control group before and after the treatment. Why do we employ the difference in differences method? Because it can elevate the omitted variable bias. Suppose there were unobserved factors that influence the outcome variable. We could not include the unobserved or unmeasured factors in the model, and therefore it could result in omitted variable bias. After difference in differences, the unobserved factors will be cancelled out of the model and the estimates will be unbiased. In other words, the estimate is the pure treatment effect, which can better explain whether the treatment works and makes a difference. Let's see how we can do the difference in differences in the OLS regression model. We include the interaction term between the treatment and the after variables in the model. The coefficient beta 3 on the interaction term measures the average treatment effect. For the control group, the difference between after and before the treatment equals beta 2. For the treatment group, the difference between after and before the treatment equals beta 2 plus beta 3. The difference in differences is beta 3. Beta 3 measures the pure effect of the treatment on the outcome by ruling out other inferences experienced by both groups. For instance, both groups of people may experience an economic downturn that is unobserved or unmeasured. It is not captured by the model. Using the difference in differences method, we can account for these unobserved inferences as if they are included in the model. It is important because these unobserved factors may lead to omitted variable bias if they are left out of the model. A crucial assumption for unbiased difference in difference estimates is the parallel trend assumption. We assume that the treatment group and the control group are similar in every aspect except that the treatment group did not receive the treatment. In other words, any trends in the outcome Y would change in the same manner for the two groups of people in the absence of the treatment. It is equivalent to saying that the unobserved factors impact the outcome variable in the same way between the control group and the treatment group. Well, if the assumption is violated, that is, the two groups are not similar. One solution is to include other observable explanatory variables as controls in the model. 
In this framework, the control variables account for the differences in the observable characteristics between the two groups that are not due to the treatment. We hope that after parceling out the effects of these control variables, the residual outcomes satisfy the parallel trend assumption. As a result, the estimates become more robust and causal. Please download the dataset DID.DTA for this topic. The dataset is about the marital status information for people living in Illinois and Indiana. The No Fault Divorce Law took effect in 1973 in Indiana, but it is not implemented in Illinois until 1984. The low fault divorce law makes divorce less costly. People wonder whether the law increases divorce cases. The treatment here is the enforcement of the law in 1973 in Indiana. The treatment group is the families in Indiana. The control group is the families in Illinois. I collected the marital status information before and after the law enforcement for the two states. The variable divorced indicates people's marital status. It is equal to 1 if divorced, is 0 if married. The variable after indicates the time periods after or before the introduction of the no fault divorce law. The treatment variable equals 1 if living in Indiana and 0 if living in Illinois. We use the tabulate command to generate a one-way tabulation for the variables and find the percentage of each category. There were various ways to perform a difference in differences analysis in Stata. First, we can use the tabulate command to do that. Please refer to the course Introductory Stata Summary Statistics and Data Management for detailed information about the tabulate command. Let's tabulate the statistics in a two-way table. We type tabulate followed by the treatment variable and the after variable. We use the summarize option to show the sample mean of the variable divorced. We also apply the no frequency and no standard deviation options. Here we have the 2x2 two two table of the basic difference in differences estimates. We see that for the treatment group, Indiana, the average divorce probability increases by 5.5% points from 10.6 to 16.2. On the other hand, for the control group, Illinois, the divorce probability increases by around 3.6 percentage points. So the difference in differences estimate is around 2 percentage points. In other words, the no fault divorce law enforced in Indiana actually raises the divorce likelihood by 2 percentage points after we account for the trend of the divorce rate due to reasons other than the law. We can also use the regress command to perform the difference in differences regression. The I dot prefix tells data they are dummy variables. The double hash tags include the interaction term between the two variables treatment and after in the model. Let's run the regression and here's the output. From this table we know that beta 1 is the difference between the two groups before the treatment. Beta 2 is the change after treatment for the control group. We can interpret the estimates this way. Before the law enforcement, the treatment state Indiana had a 3.7 percentage points higher divorce probability than the control state in the law. 
for the controlled state in the law, the divorce probability increased by 3.6 percentage points after the law took place in the laboring state. The coefficient of the interaction term is the estimate of the average treatment effect, that is, the causal effect of the no-fault divorce law on divorce cases. It is around two percentage points. It is the same value as we calculated using the tabulate command. The treatment effect is not statistically significant at the 10% level. The no-fault divorce law causes divorce cases to increase, but is not statistically significant. If we are worried about the parallel trend assumption. We could add control variables to the model. For example, the family income and the number of children could affect the divorce decision. We can add them as control variables. The result shows that more children or higher annual family income reduced divorce. The average treatment effect of the no-fault divorce law drops. To 1.2 percentage points, it is still not statistically significant at any reasonable level. Thank you so much for watching this video. See you soon in the next topic. Take care. Thank you for watching this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. See you next time.